that is right, DSM 7.1. We were just getting used to DSM 7 and 7.1 is now sort of being spoken about. Now, senior figure uh, Mike Chen over at Synology there, during their keynote speech, talked about and outlined a lot of the things they're either working on or will be implemented at the beginning of when DSM 7.1 is rolled out. Now, this isn't going to be a massive upgrade in the way the DSM 6.2 went to DSM 7. This is going to be a kind of sub upgrade. And before I go any further with all of the details that were touched on throughout, it's worth highlighting that I would say 98, maybe even 99% of the things that were talked about as improvements within the DSM 7.1 update whenever that is are pretty much high-end enterprise if you're lucky we're talking smb or super duper pro consumer user so if you were hoping and coming to this video as someone that owns like a j series box and wondering oh what are the upgrades going to be there i wouldn't i want you to watch this video i really do but honestly there's not going to be a lot for you here i just wanted to front end this video with that so First and foremost, let's talk about a lot of the updates. I'll be honest, I'm going to mention the letters C2 quite a lot. Now, the first thing that was um, talked about during that keynote speech was improvements to Active Insight. Now, for those that aren't aware, Active Insight is a kind of um, outside the NAS system monitoring system, and it allows you to get incredibly analytical and deep system information on active devices from a single portal access point that can be accessed via and anywhere in the world. It allows you as a system administrator to overview one, two, or hundreds of Synology NASs from this single vantage point and find out everything from individual app versions all the way down to system temperature and drive activity as well. It's all rolled in into this service. Now, Active Insight is going to have tweaks and improvements laid into it on individual app levels and in the graphical user interface in line with DSM 7.1 update. So again, it's going to be um, a much, uh, it's going to be an improved single display. I know at the moment the single display of Active Insight, and we've covered it in its own kind of overview video. Um, I believe earlier this year, maybe late, uh, right at the end of 2020. Um, Active Insight allows you to have a lot of information presented there on screen with a lot of kind of customized alerts and recommendations from Active Insight itself telling you how to perform and how to improve things or recommended actions moving forward. Now, a lot of that information for you, the end user, is in that single display. And in Active Insight with DSM 7.1, they're talking about an improved single usage display that not only provides the relevant information, but the information within those boxes. Now, I talk about those alerts and a lot of that information that's being presented to the system administrator to work with. A lot of that is going to come from how Active Insight is going to be improved uh, with regards to suspicious activity monitoring. So obviously, a lot of the time, if you log into an ASP with the wrong password, a little alert will come up there on your standard DSM interface there that goes on. Um, incorrect login attempt was made. At da -da 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 -da. It doesn't really do much more than that, and you can set up certain things to happen within DSM that trigger when that happens. But Active Insight takes that considerably further because it has to, because it's on a much larger uh, kind of space being monitored there. So in terms of improvements within suspicious activities, and again, I am going to keep glancing at my notes there, a lot of that is to do with um, kind of um, activity tracking and how it's a little bit more proactive about what it looks for, such as uh, usage patterns, uh, login attempts, and that's times, and that's, that's login times as well over historical data, not just that it's incorrect, but how and where these logins are taking place throughout the system. And then on top of that, it not only tracks these usage patterns against historical data, then it has um, far more uh, forward, uh, forward presented actions given to the admins, which they can then work on with improved suggested actions as well. So again, a lot of this suspicious activity isn't just black and white. It's a lot more gray introduced in there, which is going to be incredibly important when you're monitoring a widespread system. Now, other improvements that have been made into Active Insight with 7.1 planned, um, is integration of things like hyper backup for a number of you that utilize multiple NASs and hyper backup. Remember, that doesn't have to be NAS to NAS, that could be NAS to third party server, that could be client devices to the NAS and a number of different kind of um, connections there between all of your client hardware. There's gonna be specific hyper backup monitoring within Active Insight. Again, super enterprise, 
Again, I appreciate the majority of people watching this right now. I'm going to be hugely thrilled about that. But it's what this opens the door towards. So Active Insight up to this point is generally monitoring the system configuration and storage configuration in kind of a by the numbers fashion. By having integrated applications both within Active Insight and elements of C2, something we'll talk about later on, that's going to improve remote level access and response to a lot of things that happen within the system. And in the case of hyper backup, you want to know not only if an error happens, but how it happened and resolutions in order to repair it. You want the system to tell you what to do, not just go, it's not working, <laughs> which is quite good to see. And that's kind of the whole USP of Active Insight overall. And also, how this further gets inter integrated into other applications, which other apps are going to be rolled into Active Insight as DSM 7.1 is worked on and eventually released. Now, carrying on with a lot of those applications that were introduced in DSM 7, and of course, slightly more enterprise and definitely C2 focused ones, there were talks about improvement with hybrid share with regards to DSM 7.1. So, for those that aren't aware, hybrid share is uh, the ability to utilize an areas of storage on the C2 platform and then give it the appearance of localization on your Synology NAS. But it's so much more than that. It allows users to be able to access areas of storage that are pulled between the NAS and the cloud space remotely and allow access via the network to the NAS storage as well. It just opens the door to levels of access. It, it features encryption, end-to-end -end encryption as well. And it's just a much more convenient way for a lot of remote users to interact with Synology storage and the Synology storage itself interacting with that cloud space there in the background. Now, uh, some of the improvements of hybrid share there, there's three main ones uh, that were introduced during uh, the keynote speech. The first one is the support of GFS Global File System. And this is kind of been a long running uh, problem that it's resolving for a long time for NAS users that have got multiple users all accessing the same database there. Now, with, uh, what this solves is, what if you have five or six people all accessing the same file, all editing it? For those of you that have done this before, you'll know that in most cases, the best case scenario is that everyone suddenly creates their own version of that file, and then you've suddenly got multiple versions of the same file with very small differences, or worse, people start overwriting each other's work in the very worst case scenarios, which means a lot of time and effort is wasted and a lot of data can be lost. Now, a uh, global file system, uh, GFS, allows, once a user goes into a file, it effectively locks the file. Other people can see the file, but they, if they can't interact with it, they can't edit it, it it's told them this file is locked, and they'll, when so they go back into it, they'll know that it's not being edited and accessed. There is an open file, and therefore it eliminates that doubt and that overlaying or that duplication of um, slightly edited files there. Again, this has been a long-running thing, something that has been moderately resolved, but never to completion. So, you know, if they can interact this with a lot of that hybrid chair file access and make sure that this isn't something that just becomes um, a through line of problems down the line in the system as data is stored locally on the bare metal, that's going to be a good thing. Now, alongside this, they've also improved uh, encrypted protocol with HTTP3 support as well. So again, that's going to improve secure remote access to where you are. They've always had encrypted uh, transmission where available, but again, if you are accessing the contents of that C2 drive and the data that lives in that hybrid share um, folder or area of storage, you don't know sometimes how secure your environment's going to be. And you want to know with a little bit of peace of mind that if there is that 1% doubt in your local area about the secure connection you're utilizing, it's good to have that extra layer built into it. Just know this is something that you're gonna to have to enable there um, at both ends of the tunnel. Now, the other thing is warm up cache or cache warm up. Now, for those that aren't aware, when you are accessing files um, on the hybrid chip, particularly via the NAS, a cached version is then kept generally cache up to this point will only really interact with the files once they've been accessed the first time and that cache being kept for a predefined area uh, length of time. Uh, warm up cache will then see which files are being more commonly accessed and cache them in advance, have them ready, much like traditional cache that we utilize on our NAS systems. That's nice to see something that's gonna be available here, rolled out within HybridShare and DSM 7.1. 
Another thing that was touched on within DSM 7.1's coverage there at the keynote speech and something I covered in my review of this, the DS3622XS, is further utilization and deployment on f uh, future business NAS systems of OOB or OOBM or out of bound management. Now, it's never really been difficult to log into a NAS if it's on the network or connected at least with remote level access into that network and interact with the NAS, reboot, have a look and log into it and stuff. But sometimes the level of access gets destroyed at the network level or the system is being incredibly unresponsive. Now in the past, much like with routers and switches, that is where OOB has shined. It gives uh, via utilization of a SSH client to log into the device and see logs, issue um, power recycling, so reboot in the system, and just doing troubleshooting remotely. You don't have to be physically there on site and it creates a completely independent connection via, uh, rather than relying on the existing network there. Now do better in mind that it does require uh, an additional admin access to utilize that you're gonna have to create that and it's something you do within the admin panel of uh, outbound uh, management within DSM so you'll have to set that up for the first time but what's particularly interesting there is if you do reset the NAS system it doesn't reset that login there so again that's gonna be really good for people that log into the system to kind of eliminate all outside access and kind of infiltrate the system itself as long as you've got that set up there that doesn't eliminate that now of course it's not perfect but it's better to have it than not and again the first now as i've seen to um, arrive uh, with not only the physical port but real highlighting out of band management at this zone dedicated port was this this 3622XS Plus. I've still yet to fully explore it and really I'm, hope, I'm hoping to work on a video to show you some of the distinct differences between that and traditional network access there via a standard LAN port, the network and an SSH client or Telnet or something. But still nonetheless, then rolling this out is another one of those things that's just edging them more towards the enterprise bracket there. It's a good thing that a lot of the home users are going, but that's, that's swell, but what about us? Another subject that was touched on several times during that keynote where DSM 7.1 was highlighted was the utility of DFS. Not the SOFA company, but distributed file systems. Now, this is the ability that when you've got several server, be it shared areas of storage or just whole system storage servers, all being accessible and visible and interactable via a single interface there. Again, that distributed file system. Now, that was touched on in a couple of ways. Um, whether that was a single portal access they're working on there, something we'll talk about at the end of the video as well when they were talking about the future. But there was also a lot of discussion about this idea of read-only domain controllers. So um, this means that if you are running a multi-site deployment, the idea that all of your individual sites, your little sub-offices, not the main head office, they can they, the ability to have those as read-only to access the central database there but not interact with it in a whole system-wide manner. It's incredibly enterprising, and again, very, very much at the top there, but it's nice to see them still developing towards this enormous ecosystem structure would have been great to see some home level stuff there but still even if you're only going to utilize three to five servers you are going to find this very very useful if you're running like three to four shops this is going to be something of use to you when you want to allow access to all of that data and you still want to give them access but don't let them edit it but you at the admin end at the central point of data storage want to be able to monitor all of this in as most convenient fashion as possible Next up was something that I legitimately think a lot of people at the medium or even just slightly mid-range prosumer end might take advantage of, and that was full DSM system NAS bare metal backups. So we're already used to the idea of individual app backups there, file folder backups there, even larger storage volume backups to a larger degree. And then you've got active backup suite working in the other directions and more. But what if you want to clone the entire NAS? Not just file folder, but everything. Configuration, just have a backup of the entire DSM architecture to move onto another NAS, including the data and everything. That is something that they're saying is going to be explored in DSM 7.1. Now, they are also stating that much like active backup and hyper backup, and indeed elements of uh, snapshot replication there as well, some of those are going to be bled into this. So we are talking about scheduling those backups. We're talking about uh, modifiable, modifiable and customizable uh, retention policies on that data with regards to images moving on. Then there's the duplication of those things. So you can 
create the backup and then create several versions of it. Although I'm not too sure how that's going to work in the real world. And then there's talk of how that will be factored into deduplication in the other direction when you're going to have like a central, maybe a presumably C2 based record there of all of these backups getting sent and factoring into duplication. But again, I'm slightly unsure how that would work in a real world scenario with multiple NASs there and to duplication. Yes, there'll be common access Synology core files, but I'm still not sure how that will be implemented in C2 with the exception of maybe space saving it would be beneficial, but I'm not sure. And then of course you've got incremental differences where of course the initial backup of DSM and the hot system as a bare metal hole um, is obviously going to be bigger, but then only changes get backed up moving forward. And that in line with the retention pol policies and the scheduling of multiple time managed images could be incredibly beneficial to roll back your system to an earlier date or if you want to clone your NAS onto another NAS there. But again, this is something I'm really looking to see how they present this rather than just calling it DSM backup about really showing off its utility in real world environments. And that's about it. Details were quite scant on DSM 7.1, as one might expect, with Synology playing their cards very close to their chest about what they are planning for the future. They did, of course, also talk about one thing at the end to give you some idea about the direction with which they are heading with regards to enormous hyperscale storage there. Now, um, referred, they say, to scale out storage. Of course, scale up storage is something we're kind of used to, whether it's your 920 there, that 360. 622 that we talked about or even rack mount storage expandability of NASes and adding and bolting on expansions is something you know we're kind of quite used to in the world of NAS right now even taking on some of that cloud storage as well but a lot of that is designed to be running parallel not expanding onto but scale out storage as they put it is to utilize similar methods and concepts that we find in RAID where we have multiple storage areas that are all working together with that same data being spread across them. They apply, you know, they showed a, um, a demonstration there or a little graphic there just showing off this idea of taking advantage of distributed file servers again, but this time on whole system storage levels, ultimately allowing borderline infinite storage capabilities across that scaled storage area. But again, how that gets implemented in real time with lowering the latency as much as possible and whether this is going to be wholly reliant on incredible uh, network controllers that still remains to be seen and of course during the keynote and further videos over on the youtube channel they did talk a lot about uh, far more uh, i would say a great deal closer updates that are coming to synology router manager srm in version one uh, 1.3 and updates to surveillance station we're going to do a whole dedicated video on both of those probably the surveillance station uh, version 91 first because that for me was the thing that got the most um coverage in terms of upgrades and really cool stuff to come but that was really it for what was mentioned about dsm 7.1 not a lot to go on and definitely uh, highly business as i mentioned there at the intro but let's see what happens i don't think they're going to change much about the design it's still a great design i like it although maybe they could do something about some of photos and maybe add some of those old moments features who knows but we'll see but this has been the coverage of dsm 7.1 at the synology 2022 and beyond event do subscribe if you want to stay tuned for a lot of the updates and summaries of everything we learn at this event because there's still more to come in terms of hardware and software and of course if you've enjoyed this video click like it helps me understand what i'm doing right and it makes each video better than the last thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time